results were different this weekend than last weekend. Do you, do you feel demonstrably different about your team right now than you did a week ago? Nope. Yeah. Nope. Feel the same about the team. Uh, was happy that there were some things that we improved upon base running wise, um, pitching mentality. Um, we started cashing some guys in with guys on base in scoring position specifically. So those were a few of the positives that I saw that we uh, improved upon in one week's time. Was it good to win in maybe a multitude of ways over the weekend? Show you guys can win different kinds of games? Uh, yeah, I don't know how many different ways we won. I mean, we, um, you know, we ended up winning three ball games, which is nice. Um, I, I just feel as though, like, the, from a defensive standpoint, things have settled down quite a bit, uh, which is really nice. It usually starts in the catching position, and I think a lot had to do with that spot. Um, and then, you know, around the diamond when Josh Kasevich is making some really good plays over at third base, um, you know, it definitely settles things down quite a bit. And I, I just thought we played a much better, cleaner style of baseball for the last three days than we, we, than we did for the first four games early in the uh, two weeks ago, I guess. Does experience tell you that happens week one to week two, that you just clean some things up? Uh, no. Yeah. You know, I think it's fickle um, depending on how it goes. Um, and so sometimes things pop up at times where you don't expect them to. Uh, week one, uh, to be quite candid with you, I, uh, I, I was very apprehensive going into the weekend of week one. Um, week two, I just wanted to see signs of improvement, so I was pleased with what we saw, and that's pretty much what I want to see going into week three. I know you weren't here, but last year there were times it felt like, you know, if you had a big at-bat coming up, you needed Spencer Steer to be the guy. The depth of your lineup with Scanlon hitting out of what the eighth spot and Zavala producing a little bit. Do you you feel like you've got a pretty deep lineup right now or no? Uh, not yet, but potentially uh, we do feel as though we should have some hitters in that lineup that can uh, convert and uh, put up some decent numbers offensively. Um, you know, we've got a couple of guys going in the lineup right now. We don't have everybody going in the lineup. You know, one of the things that I'm not happy about is the, the bench play at this point in time. The guys who have come off the bench, we haven't seen success there. Um, and that's usually a staple of what we do. And so, um, you know, again, we're going to be working really hard here in this week specifically, today specifically, to where we can address that and a couple other issues. What's your plan for the pitching with four games in three days? Well, I, I don't plan on changing a whole heck of a lot with the pitching. Um, you know, the closing role with Summers, the setup role with Bro. Um, you know, Nico Telache setting up, uh, you know, seventh inning, eighth inning, depending on where things are in their lineup and what our best matchups are. But those three guys at the back end seems to have been successful. We hit the bump in the road the first weekend on a couple of the games, um, you know, and so we made that adjustment. I think that's paid some dividends. Um, and then other than that, you know, the starters have done fine. There's a couple of young guys that really want the ball too. And so it's definitely not going to be a feeling, I think, with those four starters that uh, they've got anything made. They've got to continue to produce or else we will make changes. And Moziello specifically, um, you know, Andrew Moziello and uh, Decker Stedman both have uh, are two guys in that bullpen that clearly could be starters, young freshman kids that I would love to someday be able to have in that starting rotation. And, and those guys want that too. So, um, yeah. You mentioned Moziello over the weekend. So he's definitely still in your mind as a guy who's knocking on that door. Oh, clearly. I mean, he, he showed up now a couple of different outings that he's had, and he's just been electric. Um, you know, not only his velocity, but just the way he's pitching, you know, able to spin a breaking ball in there for a striker and a change up as well. So three pitches for strikes, and he's able to expand the zone with his breaking ball. Uh, he's able to expand the zone with his fastball, not only side to side, but up as well. And so, you know, that's the fundamentals of pitching, you know, and when a guy can do that, he can have success. And so um, for us to use him is an automatic at this point. He's screaming, use me. And I think that as you go, you'll probably see his role uh, increase clearly because he's earned it. Is it even more important for starters to go deep in the game in a, in a weekend where you have that extra game, that double header? Or? Uh, yeah, I mean, you want to you want to try to protect your bullpen, especially in the early season. You know, um, we have selectively gone two outings or two days in a row with a bullpen guy or two every weekend just by plan, and we have kept bullpen guys out of two days in a row by plan um, in the in the first two weekends, and so. Um, yeah, it's awfully nice when those pitchers and the starters should be getting built up now. You know, they'll be in the 85 to 95 pitch range um, here, maybe even 100 pitch range uh, for sure with at least one of our starters who's physically able to handle that. 
Um, but they'll be they'll be pretty much at full go now from a starting standpoint. And that's, you know, today we get another look at Kenyon Yovan to, to see his progress. And so he's still coming along, and he'll be throwing today in our scrimmage. What did, uh, what's Colby Summers shown you over the, over the last few months that you, that you like him right now at the back end? Uh, great mentality, great consistency. He wants the ball, and it looks like he's an imposing figure on the mound when he's out there right now. He's, he's got that swagger and attitude to him, so we're just – Hoping that he can continue that. Do you expect to see a hungry Milwaukee team considering they're coming in one and seven? Uh, one and seven. Don't be deceived about that. They, you know, they beat a top twenty uh, team on the road. They've gone coast to coast. Um, you know, they've played one weekend on the East Coast, one weekend on the West Coast. Coming back to the West Coast now, that's not a scared staff in terms of putting their team in front of good competition. Uh, their coaching staff's really good. They're a physical group. We watch them on video, the scouting that we've done of them, not just pitching, but physical hitters. Um, they've always had a mentality, uh, and it'll be you know stereotypical Midwestern corn-fed guys just getting it and ripping it and throwing it hard. I mean, they're, they're a very physical group that we're going to need to play very well to win baseball games against them.